Emmanuel Tago. And now it's time for our tale of the tape for this, the main event of the evening. Lightweight division, Ryan Garcia, 10 years, Tago's junior. He's two inches taller and will have a one inch reach advantage. Here are the rules for this bout. There are the unified rules of boxing. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round and only the referee can stop the fight. Here we go, Jeremiah Gaines. And now, fight fans, the moment the boxing world has been waiting for. The return to the ring is now. 12 rounds of boxing in our main event of the evening. Introducing to you first at the Mangus Ring Walk. Introducing to you the pride of Aquagana, the game boy, Emmanuel T. Well, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Emmanuel Tago lost his professional debut. Since then, Sergio, he's won 32 fights in a row. It just shows uh, the resilience and it shows you what type of fighter and the mentality that he has to get back to this big stage. And he's, he's brimming with confidence. He expects to beat Garcia tonight. He showed no respect for him. I mean, I'm interested in seeing exactly what type of performance he's gonna have tonight because his team is very confident. He's in shape, he's ready to go. I've watched Tongo fight, he's a tough fighter, but makes mistakes that you do not want to make against Ryan Garcia. What I mean by that is that he keeps his right hand very low before punching and while punching, and that's the last thing you want to do in the ring with Ryan Garcia. Uh, he will time you, and he will knock you out with that powerful left hook, so let's see if we see that from Ryan Garcia tonight. And Sergio Tango's wins, almost all of them, have come in the Ghanaian capital of Accra. 31 of his 33 career fights have come there. What do you think he's sensing fighting in America in front of this big, big crowd? Well, look, that, that could always be a, a red flag when, a, when you see a boxer only fighting in his home country, but there's some tough fighters in Ghana, so that doesn't say that, doesn't say that, that it's a red flag. But yeah, anytime you come to the States, especially when you're fighting someone like Ryan Garcia, you know, it, it's going to be a lot. His last fight with Mason Maynard was in the States, and that was a close majority decision. There were no fans for that fight. That was back here in COVID. I called that fight, Sergio. A lot of fans here tonight, but he's taking his time. As he should. Yeah, I mean, soak it up. This is what he said he wanted. If it were up to Ryan Garcia, this ring walk would be longer than the fight. <laughs> we'll see if he can get that early knockout that his fans certainly want to see. Ike Corte, also a Ghanaian fighter, had a war with Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya said that was the toughest fight of my career. Do you see any similarities between Tago and Corte? No, no, I don't, because Ike Corte had a beautiful jab. He had a, a check hook, a beautiful check hook, long arms. Tago has long arms, but no, I don't see similarities. Just two different fighters. They call him the game boy. Looking very relaxed, Sinisa. We know he said he, he had issues with anxiety, with nerves, but he looks cool right now. He looks great. Ryan looks like he's in a great place mentally. He seemed very calm and, and, and outgoing and the fun Ryan that he is in the fighter meetings. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad he took that break. He needed it. Just as every fighter does, boxing is takes a toll on you mentally. So I'm glad Ryan Garcia got the, the help and the time off that he needed. And he looks like he's ready to go tonight. You know what, Todd, to, to add on that, boxing is, you know, saves a lot of lives in, in in, in for fighters and boxers in particular, but this is a sanctuary. It's a refuge for some yeah, fighters. And I think the one. reason that Ryan Garcia is in a good place now is because he knows he's at home doing at what he does best. He belongs under the light. He belongs in the performing in front of the crowd. This is what he's made for. And I think whatever's going on in his personal life gets put in the back seat once he comes out here and performs in front of these people.
And all boxing fans, ready to make his return to the ring. Introducing to you the fighting pride of Victorville, California. Here is Ryan Garcia! There he's done it again! Ryan Garcia! There is a new tank in the 135 pound division! That was sensational for Ryan Garcia. One round, he's out! Ladies and gentlemen, from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, USA. We are live on the zone. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division. And it is all presented to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Tapella Entertainment. Sponsored by Hennessy, never stop, never settle. Odds for tonight's fights are brought to you by Bet Online. And O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Your three judges find this contest at ringside are from Connecticut, Thomas Corazone, from Nevada, Lisa Ciampa, and from Texas, Ellis Johnson, and a referee in charge of the action at the sound of the bell from Texas, John Shorley. And now, fight fans around the world, Two diamonds, one ring. Tonight will shine the brightest. Thomas y Caballeros. It's golden time. <laughs> Introducing you first tonight, fighting out of the blue corner. In 33 professional contests, his record is outstanding. 
32 victories, 15 wins, coming to my way of knockout and only one defeat. Introducing to you the fighting bride of Akrangana. Here is the Game Boy, Emmanuel T. And across the ring, running out of the red corner, standing with California Boxing Hall of Famer trainer Joe Goosen, assisted by Father Henry Garcia and Brother Sean Garcia. Tonight, wearing emerald green with gold, he officially weighed in 138.8 pounds. In 21 professional bouts, he is perfect. 21 victories, 18 wins coming to by way of knockout, no defeats. Tonight, ready to establish his return. Here is the fighting pride of Victorville, California, Ryan Garcia. Thank you. Okay, guys, both these trunks are good right there. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Ryan Garcia looking to regain momentum, reinvigorate the public, and reward his fans with a highlight reel knockout. Standing in his way from Ghana, one of the most confident and hungry fighters you will ever meet. And Emmanuel Tego. Ryan Garcia is back. He was missed. How good will he be? 12 rounds live from San Antonio, Texas on the zone. Todd Grisham, Sinisa Estrada, and Sergio Mora on the call. Garcia starting off really fast, walking down Tego right off the bat. Wants to start off fast and impose his size. Officially, Tego listed just two inches shorter than Garcia, but he looks eight inches shorter right now. No, he's shorter, but he has a longer reach, believe it or not. Tego has a 74-inch reach. <laughs> Tego reaching with that right hand. He's got to get it inside. Speaking of right hand, Ryan Garcia has his right hand back, so like I said in the fighter meeting, maybe we'll be seeing that right hand he, tonight. He promised us the right hand is 100%. And he will land it. A lot of pressure being applied by Ryan Garcia, cutting off the ring, walking down Tago. You know that's Joe Goosen right there. Joe Goosen loves pressure to impose the will and size of a boxer. A lot of pressure on Ryan to perform tonight. From his body language and talking to him, he doesn't seem to be feeling it, though. <laughs> Joe Gusta's trainer said, I would be absolutely shocked if this goes the distance. With that body shot, Garcia's going downstairs already. Tego laughing it off. A lot of pressure on Tego, you would think. Biggest fight of his life, an entire country behind it. Ryan Garcia applying a lot of pressure, but I don't see no sweat listening. No. I'm not sure if he's really warmed up, but right now he's going after it. No warm up needed when it comes to King Rai, I guess. Trying to shrink the ring down. Good jab right there by Tego, right to the chest. Garcia's getting really aggressive, so whenever you have someone that aggressive, just a, a jab to the chest would back him off. Just like that. We've seen from Garcia before, one punch is all it takes. The right hand seems to be back. That's right across the jaw. Tego on his bicycle going backwards. I think that left hook caught the attention of Tego. Came so fast. The speed is what catches you off guard. It's a mix of speed and power. There it is again.
Round two. And most boxing pundits said if Tago can make it out of the first three or four rounds, he's got a chance. One round down. With the kind of pressure that Garcia's applying on Tago, he will have the opportunity to land something. But right now, the, the speed is overwhelming Tago and the aggression of Garcia. He's just walking forward, no respect for Tago right now. Garcia just looks so much bigger. That's what Garcia's gonna need more of. I think uh, it's gonna be a right hand. Tago is really good at punching and dipping, so he can dip under the left hooks, but that right hand is gonna be a lot harder to get away from. Sinisa, does it bother you that Garcia keeps his hands low? That Garcia keeps his hands low? Oh, when he's moving forward. Um, as long as this, yes, it's, his chin should definitely be tucked in. I mean, we don't want to see the same thing that happened with the Campbell fight, him countering over the top because Ryan head is too high or his chin is too high. So, um, yeah, we'd like to see him keep his chin tucked like he is now while he's walking forward with his hands high. Of course, Luke Campbell, the first fighter to drop Ryan Garcia. That was January 2nd of last year, over 450 days since we've seen Garcia in a boxing ring. You know, some fighters fight better with their hands a little low like that. You can see there's that right hand. Right cross, Tago. That got, shook. Yeah, he's got happy feet now in the corner. That shook Tago with the right hand right to the temple. Kind of short-circuited him for a minute, there and he goes! And that's what Ryan Garcia's gonna need to knock down Tago, that right hand. Tago's mad at the ref. Should be mad at himself. He legitimately got caught. Let's see how wounded he is. Ryan Garcia predicted two or three rounds to take Tago out. Tago trying to duck underneath all these punches. How low can he go? With this much aggression that Garcia's applying on Tago, Tago has an opportunity to land something as well. He can't match the speed of Garcia, but if he can catch him in time of coming in or even bang away at the body, Tago does have strong punches to the body. 15 KOs in his 32 wins, Emmanuel Tago. Everyone knows that speed kills, but I'll tell you what it does. Speed intimidates. You have to let that right hand go. Okay? You have to let that right hand go. Okay? As soon as that back touches the rope, right off that rope, right hand, roll underneath that left hook. Okay? He's walking straight in. He's nice and square for that right hand. Okay? So I need to see that right hand straight down the middle and then drop that level, right? He counters that right hand with that Well, Sinisa, was this a knockdown in your opinion? I don't think it was a legit knockdown. It's kind of behind the head. Oh, that was, yeah, <laughs> that, that was a knockdown, <laughs> definitely. It was definitely, definitely a knockdown, knockdown. and uh, Tego was yeah. uh, stunned right, by the speed. It was more the speed. It wasn't that it landed cleanly. It was more the speed that caught him off guard. But yes, that, that definitely rocked him. Well, it spun him halfway around. Check it out. You know, Tago doing the veteran move, saying that it was a push, but a punch definitely landed there. All right, round three now. Tago to the canvas in the second. That'll be a 10-8 round for Flash. Seems like it's a little difficult for Ryan to land that left hook that he loves to land because Tago's moving away. Not only but moving if away. he... If he throws that right hand like Sergio said and lands it, then it's going to open up for the left hook. Tegel's, Tegel's good at punching and dipping. Uh, so that's why I said that left hook wasn't going to be the punch that, that was going to land. It's the right hand and uppercuts. Because Tegel does dip down. Tegel has a strong back. Nice body shot from Garcia. Body shot there by Garcia. Sound of that hurt me. Oh. 
You know, Tago's face, he just looks flummoxed. He looks like he's in survival mode. He's been he doesn't want to get caught with yeah. the big shot from Ryan Garcia. He's been spun around literally, and now just trying to find his bearings. And the speed is just luring. It's lightning speed by Garcia and the accuracy of the punches. It's really impressive. He's like a marksman, Garcia is. Tego trying to hold on. Short right hand. Caught Tego right there. Oh. Garcia looking very, very relaxed. There was that check hook he tried to land, Nisa. Yeah, I like how he's changing it up to kind of like an uppercut hook in a way, like a long uppercut hook. And like Ryan said in the fighter meeting, he can hook from anywhere. I'll tell you what else is that. Intimidating not only the hand speed, the lightning hand speed of Ryan Garcia, but how calm he is. Look at how relaxed Ryan Garcia is just walking in. No worries in the world, no respect for Tago. Anytime you have a reactive puncher like Ryan Garcia, you gotta faint. You gotta faint to get him to bite. Those hands are way too fast. Tago's gonna get rope burns on his back. <laughs> he is backpedaling. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Sergio, he made it through three rounds. Tago needs to, if he came to win, he's going to have to take some chances. He's going to have to get some respect. Because right now, Ryan Garcia is walking him back way too easily, pinning him against the ropes. There's another body blow, right hand. Tago should return the favor to the body. Whenever you have someone that aggressive, just to, a jab to the chest or the body, just to get something going for Tago. But he's just intimidating by the blinding hand speed of Garcia. I think he's a little afraid to exchange as well. And that's where Ryan Garcia will land his solid shots when he exchanges with Tego because Tego opens up wide when he exchanges. Tego trying to get some shots in as Garcia was backing away. Here's our CompuBox power punches through three full rounds. Uh, I think Garcia might be winning. Did you expect more from Tago, Sergio? Uh, not this early, but I, I expect him. I expect him to try to do something where he's out of his element, where, where take some chances. I fourth, fifth, sixth round, but I need to see it though. If he makes it that far. Whenever you're dealing with a fighter with this much speed, you don't want to exchange with him too early. So yes, after getting out of the third round, I get it. But now he needs to take some chances. And I would aim at the body if I was Tego. Tego does have the longer arms. Tego's already been down once. It just doesn't seem like Tego has anything that's going to disrupt or bother Garcia. He 
definitely does. And I think as soon as he takes that chance that Sergio was talking about, that's where it's going to be the worst for him. But if he doesn't take any chances, he's not. He's just going to come here to, to to show up, not to win, not to do anything impressive. And he, if he says he's a warrior, he is, and he wants to take this victory back to Ghana. He needs to open up. Well, he said, listen, I'm the game boy, and I'm going to control Ryan Garcia. If I tell him to go left, he'll go left. Tell him to go right, he goes right. That's not been the case so far. Now a little wrestling match on the upstairs. Sure, Tego's taking a step forward the entire fight. I wouldn't either if I were him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sergio, how do you approach a fighter like Tego who just doesn't seem to be willing to engage at all? Well, look, both these fighters are coming off pretty long layoffs. Uh, Tego, 16-month layoff. Okay, I can understand him not wanting to take chances the first two, three rounds. But now, are you here to win? You need to do something. Punch in between the shots of Garcia. That's how you beat timing. That's how you beat speed. Or you got to rough him up. Go to the body. Do something. But if you're here to win, you got to actually take chances. Yeah, it looks like he's a little afraid to take a risk and too hesitant. Kind of in survival mode. Well, he talked plenty of trash leading up to this fight. Time to deliver. And that's my point, Todd. You know, everyone could talk the talk, but when it comes when it comes to actually doing the walking, that's, you know, people get intimidated by speed. There's a right hand from Garcia. And Garcia's not only doing it with speed, he has power behind both those hands. There is a swing and a miss from Tego. Tego is pretty impressive at going backwards. Must have done a lot of work on the treadmill. <laughs> I think by him moving backwards, it's not allowing Ryan to be able to step back and counter like he usually does. It's making it a little bit more complicated for him to do that. Chris Mannix is with Joe Goosen. Joe, what have you seen through Ryan through four? Well, I, it's what I predicted with this kid. Look, uh, Emmanuel to go. If I was his trainer I saw along, I'd be having to move, 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 trying to survive the early rounds so he could get through the early rounds, you know, then go for something. But right now, Ryan's got to break uh, to go's body down a little bit more. To go starting to hold the ground a little bit. Finally, uh, this is where we can hurt him. But he's been on the move the whole time, and we've been chasing him around the ring. Now it's it's up to us to cut the ring off, go to the body, slow him down, and those are kind of the instructions I'm giving Ryan right now. Thanks, Joe. Joe, of course, is also a boxing commentator, and you can hear why in that answer. A very detailed description. I didn't hear a jab uh, from, from Joe Goosen, though. I, I think that's what I think uh, Garcia's lacking right here. He's following him around, putting a lot of pressure, a lot of foot pressure as well. There's but body work. Some fast jabs will do the trick for Garcia. More of those right there. Sergio loves jabs. You can watch it weekly on the zone. <laughs> part of the <laughs> With Chris Not that job. <laughs> and that's the thing that actually they said they worked on. Houston said they worked on the power jab, twisting them knuckles, you know, uh, uh, going off the back foot a little bit more. See right there, that's an opportunity for Tego to land something, a counter. If he really is looking to win and hurt Garcia, anytime Garcia opens up like that with twos and threes, you got to land something back, punch in between the shots. Well, the over-under in this fight was at four and a half rounds, so Tego has gone longer than Las Vegas thought he would. <laughs> and 
Hey, at least he's in the middle of the ring now. How about this? Ryan Garcia has 18 KOs in his 21 wins. He's knocked out 15 of his last 17 opponents. He told us, quote, I only want to knock people out. I don't want decision victories. That's not why I'm in this game. And recently, he's been knocking him out to the body like he did Luke Campbell. And right here, this is why. Going downstairs, rocking him on both sides, that left hand. That caught the attention of Tego. And anytime you're dealing with a fighter who's not letting his hands go and just has that ear up defense, go to the body, go downstairs, open him up slowly. A little less retreating in that round from Tego. Let's see if he stands and delivers more in this round. This is only Tego's second fight in the United States. He fought in California where he beat Mason Menard in his most recent bout. That was way back in November 2020. And that was by majority decision, so it wasn't too impressive. And that's a red flag anytime you're getting a, a fighter that's only fought in his home country. The jabs from Tago. Not always landed. That combination right there by Garcia. Concentrate on the body just to finish it up with a clean off left hook. I could say not only defense first, but defense all the time. He has to do something offensively. So what do you do against opponents who refuse to engage? You've got to cut off the ring and uh, let go of your punches when you're in close enough range like that. You've got to take advantage of that small time that you have when you're close to them and in range. So I'd like to see Ryan Garcia open up a little more in these later rounds when he gets close enough to, to Tango. They have hurt Tango a little bit there. Nice chopping right hands right there. Short, but they're doing the job. Four, five, six chopping right hands. Oh, look at Tago fighting back for once. That's what Tago needs to do more. Punch in between the shots. That's what you're going to do with the faster man. You can't compete with Ryan's speed, but try to time him in between. A smile from Garcia says, OK, let's fight then. One, two. You hit me a little bit. There you go. Best round by Tago, but he still lost it convincingly. <laughs> right. yes, again.
Diaz. Let's check in with Jojo Diaz and see what he thinks of this fight so far. Hey, Jojo. Yeah, to be, to be honest, I'm not that impressed, man. Uh, I, I tweeted uh, earlier that I need a shot or some coffee right now to keep me up for this fight. <laughs> um, Ryan Garcia, he's not uh, a guy like Togo, man. He should have got him out of there right away. I don't think Togo has no no experience or no uh, ring generalship uh, to, be in, uh, to be in a fight for several rounds. Um, I think Ryan should, uh, Garcia should be dictating the pace a little more. You agree with that, Sergio? I, you know, I want to see more jabs because the jab, the, the jabs would actually force Tego to throw something back and open up Tego to land a counter. So, in, in a way, I, I see what JoJo's saying. Yes, you need to, you need to actually engage in order oh, to get your for Tego. Sorry to cut you off, Sergio. That may be the only big punch he lands, but he did catch Garcia clean. See, if you're just following your opponent around and, th and throwing twos and fews. There you go, Garcia with a double right hand. Let's see some action. This is the point in the fight where now Garcia has to be the one to take the risk and to open up and make Tego open up too so he can land those power shots that I know he so badly wants to land. So right here, this is an opportunity for Tego to throw something wide. Garcia's really getting aggressive. Exactly what he needs to do. Be aggressive, take the initiative to throw the combinations to make Tego open up. Copy box numbers Tego 25 138. Garcia has tripled the output 73 for 257. Swelling on the left eye now, Tego. Garcia's oh, barely missing with that. He's, over, he's really loading up on that right hand, but he's not setting it up with jabs. here in round seven. He's already tasted the power of Ryan Garcia. So the power and the speed's not catching him by surprise, but hopefully Tango needs to open up. Here's the best punch of the fight for Tego, probably the only clean one that has landed. And that's a similar punch that put Garcia down with Luke Campbell with a, a left hand type punch like that. But back comes Garcia with the speed, overwhelming Tego, pushing him backwards, not letting him get off on any counters. And Sinisa, when your opponent is ducking down to avoid punches, what do you do? That's the most difficult thing. It, like, styles make fights. Tego gets very low. Like Sergio was saying, he dips under punch as well. And that's hard when you're the taller fighter because you can't land punches and that's clean. why. And that's why I was telling Todd and Chris that I see Tego going rounds. I didn't see this fight ending quickly. You were actually right for once. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you're dealing with a fighter that punches and dips, moves laterally, has a strong back, and it's experienced like Tego, they're going to go rounds. There's a right from Garcia. Tego did go down in round two, but since then has stayed on his feet. Crowd getting a little quiet. Waiting for something big to happen. Tego, to his credit at least, hasn't allowed that to happen since the second round. Shot. 
Nice right there by Garcia. Tego trying to time Garcia right now. Finally. I got you, break. Well, Garcia's fitness certainly looks good. Stop. Stop. You're home. Well, when, you're, when you're that relaxed, and, and Garcia's not really throwing combinations, I mean, he's pot shotting Tego. You know, so it doesn't really extend, extend that much energy. Garcia wants to please this crowd so bad. He's doing everything he can. And Garcia really is throwing the right punch. He's coming up short with that right hand. I knew that left hook wasn't going to be uh, the money punch in this fight, but Garcia is trying different tactics, different punches, Look at getting different looks. There's a counter right from Tego, shrugged off by Garcia. Downtown San Antonio, Texas, the second oldest city in America. Did you know that, Sergio? I learned that when I was taking a boat ride down the river walk today. Nope. Unless, unless the guide was lying to me. <laughs> What's the first? <laughs> Jamestown. Maybe St. Augustine? I don't know. Jamestown, a good guess as well. <laughs> Watch the holding, watch the holding. You're better than that. Yes, it is St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in America. <laughs> so you're welcome. Thank you. We thought we'd be talking about history during a Brian Garcia fight, but that's holding. the kind of bout this has been, largely in part to Emmanuel Tego's unwillingness to exchange that often with Garcia, but right now he's in the middle of the ring doing it. And there we see him finally exchanging. Here he comes. And that's gonna give Garcia an opening to land something quick and fast. Maybe he's been let out of his cage here in the ninth round. Overhand right for Tego. This is the first fight with Joe Goosen as his trainer. Sergio, have you seen anything different? Quickly, actually, let's check in with Chris Mannis. Joe, we're into the ninth round now. Are you surprised we've gotten this far? No, about, about the round we're in? Sure. No, not necessarily. I, I knew this, look, he's only lost one fight in over 30 fights. This guy's not used to losing. He didn't come here to lose. I knew he had good legs. I knew he was gonna be evasive. And, uh, you know, he's done exactly that. Has he won one round? No. Has Ryan won every round? Yes. Um, are we pressuring him the last three, four rounds? Yes. Do we have a chance of knocking him out? Yes. If he keeps doing what he's doing right now. So, you know, I knew this guy was going to be competitive, and he certainly is. Thank you, Joe. I got to throw this out there. You heard Joe Goosen say that now, but yesterday, and I'm quoting here, he said he would be shocked if Tago went the full distance with Ryan Garcia. And Ryan Garcia said that he expected this fight to go two or three rounds, so I think, uh, no, uh, Tego, Tego, you know, he's one of these fighters that, that you can look bad against. And I'm not saying Ryan Garcia's looking bad, but I think he's stuck in between styles. Let's check out Chris Mannix's scorecard. 
Yeah, no surprise, Todd. I'm going to shut up 80 to 71 in favor of Ryan Garcia with a 10 hit round thrown in in the second round. He's dominated every stretch of this fight. There's one adjustment I'd like to see Ryan Garcia make. It's created a little separation between himself and Tago. Too often, he is lunging in just like that and smothering his punches too much. If he can get some separation, he can get one of those hooks off. Uppercut just missing for Tago. And the separation's going to come with jabs, believe it or not. You know, Ryan Garcia has a lightning quick jab, one of the best, and that's what actually sets up the left hooks and the uppercuts and the right hands. But whenever you're pot shotting without the jab, it's easier to see. And I think that's the issue here. And I think that's something I would like to see improvement from Ryan Garcia is fighting in the inside uh, much better. I mean, he's ha he hasn't had to fight in the inside because his power has just been knocking everybody out. But he will need to fight in the inside against certain fighters. So Tego now starting to stand and trade a little bit more with Garcia. So Ryan Garcia about to see some rounds perhaps that he hasn't seen before. He's never gone a full 12 rounds. The last time he went 10 was Carlos Morales back in 2018. The body shots there by Tego. I expected a lot more body shots from him earlier in the fight. Tego throwing more here. Tego has a good right hand. He throws good uh, body shots, but this is the first time I've actually seen any flashes of that. Who would have thought after Garcia knocked Emmanuel Tego down in round number two and was dominating, we'd see a 10th round? Well, we initially said that if Tego gets out of the first two, three rounds, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna stay in the fight. He's gonna go distance. And that's exactly what's happening. This crowd really wanting something electric to happen. Ooh, that affected him. That's up. Oh, that's cut and clean. There go the legs. And the game boy in serious trouble. Trying to hang on for dear life. Tango doing the veteran thing by holding on. By any means necessary. That could have easily been scored a knockdown. Expect him to hold on again. He is damaged goods. Ryan Garcia has a lot of time left. Let's see if he can stay out of the clinch. Keep his distance. right here to force Tangle to engage because he's he's going forward but he's giving him an escape route so getting a little you can get a little comfortable by being a little escape and continue love to, to survive. I would love to see lead right hand by Ryan Garcia. It's that right hand that actually rocked Tangle. See right there it was a one two. Lead right hand by Garcia I think was surprised and opened up the left hook. Oh a stiff left hook from Garcia. Garcia throughout this fight. You can see that his right hand definitely looks like it's back and happy. To his credit, Tago going to survive this round when he was rocked. Okay, he's 
looping that right hand because he knows where you're going to be all the time. Okay? So keep circling to the same side. Okay? I need you to give him that little spin off to the left. Fire it to that shoulder. He blocks with that shoulder. I want you to go ahead and double it up. Okay? Got two more rounds. Okay. Here's that right hand. I need you in the middle of the right ring. on the jaw right there. Okay. Buckled the knees and the legs of Tago. And Tago did the smart thing. Just hold on. Look at me. Look at my because he was really rocked by that shot right there. And it was the right hand, not the famous left hook that Garcia is known for. Denise, at this point, is Tago going to try and win these two rounds, or is he just looking to make it to the final bell? I think he's looking to just survive. If he's smart, he'll just try to survive these last two rounds and, and keep moving laterally. Um, like I said, Brian Garcia is moving forward, but he's not really cut off the ring too well. He's kind of forced, he's not forcing Tango to engage by cutting off the ring correctly. He's kind of giving him an escape route. First body shot by Tago with, with some kind of mean intentions. I, I should have. I want to see that earlier. He's an excellent body punch. It's just Garcia's way too fast, and that speed intimidates. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Ryan Garcia possibly fighting. Tank Davis, eventually Devin Haney, George Cambosis. Does this version of Ryan Garcia beat those guys? You know, I expect to see a little, uh, whenever you switch trainers like this, uh, the chemistry is not gonna be there in the first fight. So in this fight, I can't say I, that, that I'll be too impressed. Let him build the chemistry with Joe Goosen. Let him find someone else who's a little bit more offensive minded as an opponent, and then we'll get to see uh, the changes. But whenever you're dealing with a fighter like Tago, the so experience doesn't really open up. It's hard to look good against him. Garcia doing everything he can. <laughs> Copy box numbers. Power punches landed 135 to 50. I'm sure there are many who felt, especially before this fight, if Garcia doesn't knock this guy out, it would feel almost like a loss. Do you sense no, that, Sergio? Not, not really, no. It's just, uh, you know, everyone wants to see this spectacular knockout, and we want to see you know, Ryan Garcia keep it ascending and being the star he is, but there's a lot of things that, a lot of changes in his life, you know, not only, not only with personal issues, but with the trainer change, so he has to build that chemistry and meet that, that, that trust, that new trust. He's got to go the distance sometime, you know. You can't just that too. always then fights early. This kind of gives you an idea of, um, of you know, how, how he'll do against other fighters in his division. It gives him some ring, ring uh, some round experience, which is good for him. I would think the only I, the only criticism that I would have of Brian Garcia in this fight is the lack of jab. It was really there's no jab, you know. That he has a <laughs> beautiful jab and he just it's not there. <laughs> Of course, you love but I agree. With, I agree with you. I actually oh. agree with you for once. I would like to see him use the jab, yes, and also cut off the ring uh, better than he has been.
Can he find the combination to a knockout here in the 12th round? Will Tago go for Gusto or do this? Hang on, dodge, and run. Sergio, in some ways, this might help Garcia land some bigger name opponents who will say, look, I can beat this guy. He would, mean, maybe, if Tago goes 12 maybe. rounds with him, I can beat him. Maybe, but uh, you gotta add. Ooh, and right as I say that, Garcia with the left hook. It's not over when you have speed and power like Garcia. It's not over till it's over, but yeah, maybe. You know, one back performance can actually do that. But you gotta remember the inactivity and the personal issues, the hand injury. There's a lot of things that, that Ryan Garcia had to overcome. But Sinisa, would you describe this as a bad performance for Ryan Garcia, or was it just he fight, faced a fighter that did not try to win? I mean, it's hard facing fighters like this, like, like Sergio said. His, his movement makes it difficult, and you're tall. Just because you're fighting someone that's short than you, then you doesn't mean it's going to be easier. It actually makes it more difficult, because it's more difficult to land those solid, hard power shots that you want to land. So I don't think it's a bad performance for him. I just think I think it's actually good for him that he's getting these 12 rounds and he has not done that. So. Well, he's and he's basically won almost every second of every round. Right, he's still dominating the fight. And how could that be a bad performance? I mean, he's pitching a <laughs> shutout. But like you said, Todd, we're, we're going to see all the, the tweets and uh, Instagram posts about yeah. <laughs> all the, everyone in the division wanting to face Ryan. And it's not like Ryan Garcia's not trying to take him out. I mean, he's punching with mean intentions. And he's still trying to do it in the 12th round. It's just he's in there with an experienced fighter that didn't really come to win. Tego talked to talk, but he's definitely not walking it. And that's why I thought the fight would end early, because he was talking the talk. I've seen him engage a lot in fights, but he's just too scared to do it against Ryan Garcia. But Ryan needed him to engage in order for him to land those power shots, because, like I said, Tago, Tago, uh, Drops his hands while he's punching. And hey, so that's that's when you that's when he's most vulnerable. But hey, he's not doing that. He's not engaging. And listen, Garcia basically could have fought anyone he wanted to fight. They chose this opponent, so this is what they're getting. And you got to appreciate Garcia still going for the knockout in the 12th round, and he's punching with mean intentions still. But he's in there with a fighter that didn't come to win in Tago. So his first fight since January of 2021, a complete domination. He didn't get the knockout that he wanted or predicted, but he did get the win, and he's back on track and will improve to 22 and 0. Well, any more coming up here on the zone. work here from Ben. The real deal strikes again. You can see the fire in Katie Taylor. Canelo Alvarez, this is a champion in his prime. First blood to Joshua Barazzi. What a schedule we have coming up. The next time we here in America will be doing a fight, it'll be at Madison Square Garden, Sinisa. It's going to be Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. If there's anyone who's excited, the most excited for this fight, it's me. Um, I've been boxing since I was eight years old. I've seen women's boxing when it was nothing, and now it's leading to something, and it's amazing to see. I'm so excited for that fight. Such a great matchup. And fighting at the Mecca. Madison Square Garden, New York. I mean, and I love how <laughs> Katie and Serrano are the main event. And guess what we have on the other card? Men are on the other card. That's, that's great. Beautiful daughter. Let's send it in the ring as Jeremiah has the scorecard.
Ladies and gentlemen, here for the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Put your hands together for both of these warriors here inside the ring. And now we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Judge Thomas Carusoni and Ellis Johnson have about 119. 108, Judge Lisa Ciampa scores the bout. 118 to 109 to the winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Victorville, California, Brian Garcia! No surprise there as Ryan Garcia gets the win in his return fight against the defensive-minded Emmanuel Tego. Well, Sergio, the first fight under Joe Goosen, what did you see that you liked and what did you see that you didn't? Well, I love the confidence, I love the, the aggression, uh, how he tried to push the fight, looking for the knockout. He tried, he tried giving the crowd and the fan everything that they came to see, but what I didn't like is the lack of jab. I mean, the lack of jab from someone that has a beautiful jab in Ryan Garcia, the speed, that's the only thing. But other than that, I mean, this is our first fight. Let the chemistry build. All right, Chris Maddox is with our winner. Ryan, congratulations. First fight in 15 months, and you go the 12-round distance for the first time in your career. How'd you feel in there? Uh, I got nothing but respect for Takeout. He fought a hard fight. He was uh, making it a little difficult for me to end him. I, I hit him with some shots, and uh, he was crafty with the holding and stuff. You know, I was trying to get him off me. He was moving a lot. I ain't gonna lie. It's, it's a new experience. I got to cut the ring off a little better but the guy that's just gonna keep moving all 12 rounds. Yeah, he seemed to play it safe through those first three or four rounds before starting to engage a little bit in the ring. How long did it take you to try to figure him out? I mean, it, I, I think if I would've started pressing him harder in the beginning of the, uh, of the fight, I would've gotten him out of there. But, uh, you know, what can I say? He, it, it, was a, it was a track down fight. I had to track him down. It's a new experience, cutting the ring off with a guy that's gonna fight to survive, and, and I appreciate it. It was, a good, it was a good fight. This fight looked like it might have been a chance to end early in that second round when you walk, knocked Tego down. Walk me through here what you saw with those shots. He was holding. And he turned around and boom. <laughs> One of the few times he gave you kind of an opening with a little bit of space there. Yeah, he, um, he like he's very slippery. So, you know, what can I do? I have to walk him down and he's not going to gauge, give me nothing to counter. I was counting him with a lot of uppercuts in the beginning and he didn't want, he didn't want none of that. So he kept the move going. You had another chance in the 10th round when it seemed like you heard him. Could you sense that when you got him in that 10th when you backed him up? Yeah, I did, but um, you know, I, I went for it. I mean, what can I say? I, I tried to knock him out. I caught him with a, a Super good right hand, boom, right in between the shot. And he was really hurt, but uh, couldn't find the next shot. But it's okay, I'll, I'll learn more, and uh, I know I got a lot in me. First fight, working with Joe Goosen, how did that partnership work for you in the ring? It felt great, man. I was super comfortable with him. I, I love Joe. We were very comfortable in the ring, and we have a great relationship, and I got nothing but love with him, and he's just the best guy. You're coming off that right hand injury. How did the right hand hold up in there? Good, I kept throwing it. It's probably a little bruised right now, but it, it's all good. But one thing I want to say, thank you to all the fans in San Antonio. I ain't gonna lie, you guys are amazing. Uh, after a year off and going through the things you guys know I went through, I just want to say I am so happy and thankful that you guys came out. Honestly, it means so much to me. You don't even know, it means a lot. Thank you guys so much, and uh, you guys are the best. These people obviously want to see you back sooner rather than later. There's a lot of buzz about a fight potential between you and Tank Davis before the end of the year. Is that a fight you think you're ready for, or do you think you need one more fight with your new trainer before you get there? You know, in the past, um, I'm always with the call-outs, but I've grown and I'm matured, and I'm going to let my team handle it. I'm going to let all my coaches and everybody, and when it's on, it's on. But as of right now, I'm going to trust my team, and we're going to move forward. It's way more fun with the call-outs. I know it's fun, but it's unrealistic. It, you know, I don't want to lie to the fans. I think that's happened enough, and I'm not about to do that to y'all. It is what it is. When we fight, we fight. Congratulations, Ryan, and welcome back. Guys.
When we fight, we fight. Sergio, who do you want to see him fight next? I would love to see him fight one of the big names. I mean, the lightweight division is so exciting, but Ryan Garcia, I think, needs to build a little bit more chemistry with Joe Goosen. I think, uh, you know, when they, when they go back to watch this fight, they're going to they're gonna realize that they can do a little bit more. Get in there with an offensive what opponent. What about Jojo Diaz? He was sitting here earlier. Get, in there, with a, get in there with an offensive opponent. Is that Jojo Diaz? That is Jojo Diaz. I would love to see him fight Jojo Diaz next. That's definitely the fight I would like to see. Well, they're both from Golden Boy, although Jojo Diaz fights later this month. We'll see if he gets through that. As for the performance tonight, Sergio, put a bow on this. 12-round unanimous dominant decision for Ryan Garcia, but obviously doesn't get the KO he wanted. He didn't get the KO, but he went 12 rounds. I think that's the first time he's gone 12 rounds. I mean, first fight with Joe Goosen. He, they, they attempted new things. But, um, yeah, it's a little disappointing because they expected a knockout. He predicted a knockout. Joe Goosen predicted a knockout. Everyone expected it except to go. So there's a disappointment there, but move on. I mean, sometimes it's good going the distance. You don't get the knockout. Move on to the next one. Well, you always have those fights. And, Issa, you've been in there with fighters that just don't think they can beat you and don't try to beat you. How frustrating can that be? That definitely could be frustrating, and I've seen – Tuggo exchanged with his opponents before in previous fights that I've watched of his, but with Ryan Garcia, he just saw the speed and saw the power and would not exchange with Ryan, and that's what Ryan needed in order to land those big power shots that he wanted to land and that he's so great at landing is to have to go exchange with him, but he would just refuse to and just was just on the move.